Hello my dear students, in my previous video we talked about nucleic acid probes, different types of nucleic acid probes depending on their preparation, depending on uh, the type with the DNA, RNA, depending on their labeling systems, uh, either end labeled or continuous labeled and uh, then we started about the labeling uh, different kind of props in which we talk about biotinylization uh, in the continuation of my previous video we will talk about the non-isotopic method of labeling uh, here the second method which is used uh, as a non-isotopic method is use of digoxygenin which is a plant steroid obtained from a digitalis plant and is used as a reporter and an affinity molecule it itself can act as a reporter and affinity molecule and it can easily bind to any marker molecule which can be uh, or it can form an immunoassay using an antibody conjugate alkaline phosphatase. So DIG labeling supports post hybridization detection by chemiluminescence or by formation of insoluble colored precipitate and uh, it is a all purpose immunity in particular standard immunohistochemical marker for in situ hybridization so uh, digoxygenin is one of the important uh, molecule haptane molecule which can be used for indirect isotopic non isotopic labeling methods so here we can um, one more molecule which is fluorescein which is a, a molecule which has the uh, fluorescence interesting fluorescence to monitor the incorporation of a label into the probe. Here is the structure of this fluorescein molecule and uh, it can be used for DNA or RNA probe synthesis. Apple 12 DUTB is used where 12 represent a spacer arm uh, through which uh, fluorescence is attached to a deoxy uh, uridine triphosphate which is used to synthesis the DNA probes and Apple 12 UTB TP is used to synthesis of RNA probes and uh, after for hybridization high affinity antibodies prepared against fluorescein are used to localize the probe and the conjugation of these antibodies with either alkaline phosphate or HRP provides chemiluminescence or chromogenic detection. So fluorescein is a small molecule, haptane molecule, it can be used to uh, detect, to label the DNA probes. Uh, some other method you can use fluorescent dyes. Ubiquitous dyes are endocarbocyanin CY3 and CY5. They can be used as a fluorescent dye to label the variety of biomolecules including nucleic acid. These dyes can be used to label DNA props for nucleic acid hybridization by direct label incorporation via labeled nucleotides or by indirect labeling via amino allyl DUTP or amino allyl DCTP followed by a secondary reaction to link CY3 or CY5 to the probe. And these um, fluorescent dyes are basically used for the synthesis of cDNA for microarray analysis. So this is also one of the method, non-isotopic method to label the probe. And the last uh, non-isotopic method to label the probe is direct enzyme labeling. Direct enzyme labeling here we see that single standard DNA probe is used in which we can add horse reddish peroxidase along with the glutaraldehyde. Uh, it complex with that DNA you know, through hybridization and uh, then this uh, the prop DNA is then detected through the enzyme's ability to degrade this illuminol with the emission of chemiluminescence. So when the addition of illuminol this horse reddish peroxidase enzyme will degrade this dye and there is presence of chemiluminescence and we can identify the hybridized uh, target sequence in compared to non-hybridized type target sequence so direct enzyme labeling can be used uh, with any kind of available enzyme uh, here we are using horse reddish peroxidase enzyme which is a method for non-radioactive hybridization probing so this is all about the non-isotopic labeling of uh, props which methods can be used to label DNA or RNA props or, or any kind of oligonucleotides. Now we, we will talk about the DNA prop synthesis. As we know DNA props are double-stranded small segments of DNA and the uh, synthesis or labeling can be done by PCR, by random priming, by NIC translation, 
by five end labeling, five prime end, end labeling, three prime end labeling, and direct enzyme labeling. These are the method to synthesize or lab uh, label the uh, DNA probes. So one of the common method which is used uh, to label the uh, DNA probes is the polymerase chain reaction. Uh, this method has several advantages over other methods like defined segments of target DNA here the, the target DNA here, like target DNA uh, can be amplified and labeled independently of restriction sites and the template DNA it is also added in small quantity and it can be sub cloned without the help of the any uh, vector system so here it is amplifying the uh, DNA probe we can say with the help of the PCR reaction here we can see in the detail this PCR reaction where the uh, uh, denaturation annealing and then extension activities uh, has been done here it is the labeled uh, primer which is added and which can be amplified further with the PCR reaction so this is the most suitable method to use uh, to synthesize and to label the DNA probes uh, second method which is which can be used as uh, DNA nick translation method DNA nick translation it involves ram random single strand breaks uh, here we can see here it is a break uh, in the double strand target DNA which expose 3 prime hydroxyl termin termini and 5 prime phosphate termini and then nicks are introduced by endonuclease like here we are using DNAs 1 DNA is 1 and addition of DNA is 1 and multi subunit enzyme E. coli DNA polymerase 1 is used for NIC translation which con contributes 5 prime, 3 prime exonuclease and DNA polymerase activities and labeled DNTPs can be added with the help of these DNA is 1 and DNA polymerase 1. So here uh, the red font nucleotides are labeled and they can easily um, incorporate it with the help of this small NICs and uh, with the use of these two enzymes so the labeled DNA prop can be synthesized through DNA nick translation another method used for the uh, labeling of uh, DNA props is random priming method in this uh, uh, method the oligo labeling is based upon hybridization of mixture of all possible hexonucleotides here is the, these are hexanucleotides um, first we do denaturation and then aligning annealing of these random hexonucleotides with the help of clean off subunit of DNA polymerase 1 uh, DATPs, DTTPs, DTTPs which are labeled here it is a labeled molecule can be added with the help of clean off subunit of DNA polymerase 1 and further extension can be done so this method produce labeled DNAs of high specific activities since binding of primer to template DNA is random and primer represents all possible sequence combinations so uniform labeling of DNA can be done through, through this random primed DNA labeling method so this is all about the uh, DNA props and their labeling on the other hand uh, different kind of RNA props are in use as they are single stranded and they do not require boiling prior to use heating them briefly will help the intramolecular base pairing basically RNA props have certain kind of advantages over DNA props like they are uh, as we have talked that they are single stranded denaturation is very easy and they can be continuously labeled with the help of uh, in vitro transcription method in a particular suitable vector which uh, we, we will see in upcoming slide how they can be uh, labeled they are thermodynamically very stable in compared to DNA uh, and uh, when they pair with the DNA target molecule, uh, the complex is thermodynamically very stable and uh, the detection can be done very easily. Then RNA props are synthesized by in vitro transcription uh, from a linearized template, which we, which we see in the upcoming slide, how the RNA props are synthesized and labeled. Uh, but through this method, through this in, in vitro transcription method, all prop molecules generated are of uniform length now um, rna props have certain other uh, qualities like uh, uh, they can be uh, transcribed in vitro with all rna and uh, they must be treated with rna's free reagent to prevent the degradation of rna molecules the sp6 t7 and t3 bacteriophage rna polymerase promoters uh, are used 
फॉर द ट्रांसक्रिप्शन रिएक्शन एंड फॉर द सिंथेसिस ऑफ सेंस एंड एंटीसेंस आर एन ए प्रॉप्स विच कैन बी इजीली सिंथेसाइज यूजिंग दीज बैक्टीरियो फ्रेक आर एन ए पॉलीमरीज प्रोमोटर्स एंड सच काइंड ऑफ आर एन ए प्रॉप्स आर बेसिकली अनप्रोड्यूजेबल अनएक्सेप्टेबल बिकॉज ऑफ द हाई लेवल्स ऑफ बैकग्राउंड सो वी हैव टू ट्रीट ऑल प्रॉप मॉलिक्यूल्स विथ आर एन एस ए एंड आर एन एस टी दिस ट्रीटमेंट विल रिजल्ट इन डिग्रेडेशन ऑफ ऑल प्रॉप मॉलिक्यूल्स दैट डिड नॉट पार्टिसिपेट इन ड्यूप्लेक्स फॉर्मेशन बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ दैम आर लाइक वेरी इजीली डिग्रेडेबल सो दिस काइंड ऑफ बैकग्राउंड प्रॉब्लम्स कैन बी सॉल्व विद द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ आर एन एस ए एंड आर एन एस टी सो रेडियो लेबल्ड आर एन ए प्रॉप्स आर ऑफन ऑफ सच high specific activity that they may experience radiolysis if stored for extended period so their storage is also one of the important criteria they should be stored at uh, minus 20 degree centigrade and uh, at uh, froze dried so uh, here the labeling of uh, rna props as rna props yields stronger signals in hybridization reaction than dna props of equal specific activity which may be due to the innately higher stability of hybrid involving rna so they are the props of choice when analyzing transcripts of mammalian genes and uh, they are most easily achieved by in vitro transcription in which insert dna is cloned adjacent to multiple cloning sites in suitable plasmid expression vector here we can understand in this uh, slide uh, this is the uh, psp64 plasmid in which foreign dna insert is there and sp6 promoter foreign dna insert is there and sp6 promoter is there so with the help of uh, um, this expression vector uh, uh, which has a fake promoter sequence which is recognized by corresponding fake rna polymerase uh, sp6 promoter it can be recognized by sp6 rna polymerase and uh, here labeling can be done and uh, With the help of in the given plasma vector P S P sixty four bacteriophage S P six promoter sequence is recognized by S P six R N A polymerase, which is a star transcription from a particular initiate initiation site. Here, it is star transcription from a particular initiation site, and it can be cloned. And highly labeled specific R N A props can be uh, generated with the help of these uh, new radio labeled D N T P S. or non radio labeled methods can be used so this is the in vitro transcription method which is used for labeling of rna probes in which a particular plasmid and particular rna polymerase with the help of this promoter reason uh, the radio labeled rna probes can be generated so radio uh, labeled uh, or rna props which are known as ribo props are mostly created by run of transcription in which rna insert is cloned in specialized plasmid vector here we can use bacteria bacteriophage t3 and t7 promoters and rna polymerase systems can also be used labeled uh, ribo force both sense and antisense can be generated from any gene clones in such vectors and these are widely used in tissue in situ hybridization techniques so this is all about the nucleic acid probes uh, which kind of probes are being used and uh, these probes have wide usage in different kind of um, techniques in which uh, we identify the target sequence either we can use dna probes rna probes different labeling methods are there we can uh, suitably use depending on our reaction and the facilities available with us i hope you all like this video uh, and uh, kindly go through both part 1 and part 2 to understand the complete uh, nucleic acid probes thank you so much